Hey guys, Fishy Baker here, Nathan and I. Yep. We are going through our ice fishing stuff right now. It is late November. And first thing we're gonna talk about is augers. So yep. Nathan, I'll let you explain what you got in your hand right there. So this is the clam extension kit for any like drill bit auger. And what I have it set up for the eight and a half inch K drill, which is right here on the screen for you. What you really do is you just turn your drill and then I have it connected right here by this clamping system, if you can see that good. It clamps on the drill, and then all you do is then this little trigger right here triggers, and that's where the auger would attach, and then you can drill holes. Yeah, so K drill is the name of it, but it is quite literally a drill. This is a drill that you can just use and find in your toolbox at home, yep. and it will literally work as an auger. So this is a really simple yep. way to just get into ice fishing. The drill bits are still a little bit expensive, but this is a great way to get into it by just using a household thing like a drill. Yep. So that is more of our hole hopping uh, type drill when we yep. just wanna move around and be mobile. It's really light. We can just kind of do whatever. And then this is the other auger we have. This is brand new from last year. This is an all battery powered. So usually the problem with augers is the gas and it can kind of leak, you know, you run through quick, you have to keep yeah. buying more. And this couldn't be more simple. Lithium battery, you can see here, it shows you what the battery percentage is on the back. All you do is just slide it right in and then you can clip it on with the strap and that is that and all you do it goes forward it goes backwards there's a nice light that turns on when you start drilling so it's perfect for at night or early light hours this is still only I think 20 pounds or so um, so still very light compared to traditional augers and I know my old gas one weighed about 35 to 40 pounds and that can all start to total up pretty quick when lugging a lot of stuff, especially walking like what we do on bigger lakes. Definitely well worth the investment. Way cheaper in the long run. Yeah, especially when you compare it to buying all the gas yep. and the maintenance of a gas auger as far as uh, the cleanups, if gas spills and constantly having to worry about, oh, is my tank full? And one battery life on there can drill you about 650 to 700 holes, which, you know, if you think about that, that really could last you most of an ice season, if not the entire thing. So you really don't need to charge that lithium battery or have to worry about that thing really running out too much. Yeah. But I charge it up after I'm done anyways. All right, next what we got here, guys, is our jigging rods. Now, usually when Nathan and I are jigging, we are going for panfish. This is bluegills, crappies, perch. Yep. Basically anything we can get going. Nathan, I'll let you start out with that rod right there so and what you got set up. This is my main jigging rod. It is a frostbite Sobe sizzle. I don't think they make it anymore, but it's a nice noodle action and great for a panfish. I got a little three millimeter jig on there, if you were wondering. And then this is my bass jigging, which I don't really do much of. It's a Fenwick Elite Tech Ice. And I got a little little tantrum, little yeah. almost rattle trap type bait on there, and a nice Fluger Monarch reel on the bottom there. Yep. All right, and I'll show you my setup, Nathan, if you want to take the camera here. Okay. So again, this is a noodle type action rod. This is a Dave Grenz rod, but you can see here that really soft tip, and they even highlighted it neon, and you can see how that whole thing bends, but not. The main part of the rod so that fish can hit that jig and it's straight here I'm just barely tapping that and you can see already how much that rod tip is moving up and down and that is so important being able to detect those light bites fish like crappie that just barely suck in the bait they'll just barely grab onto it and you can see that rod tip just start loading up right away and that's also really nice because when you set that hook you can see all of that power gets absorbed right into the middle of the rod. You still have a really nice backbone through here. And that was the same with Nathan's rod too. And I just have a little five millimeter jig on there from Frostbite. And then I have 
eight pound braid on the main line just because braid is super sensitive and then to a six pound fluorocarbon leader and that's what you guys should be doing if you don't have mono on already yep. is some of this i know it's hard to see but that is exactly the point this is fluorocarbon basically invisible this is some eight pound i just grabbed but eight to six pound is great yep. for panfish and bass for pike and our tip-ups and stuff, and we'll get into that in a little bit, but we use mainly wire leaders for that just because the places we fish have a lot of pike in them, so really annoying to get bit off a lot. And I believe I have the same eight pound braid, and I think I have eight pound fluoro, not six pound, but yeah, and there's that's a, the only difference. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can see Nathan here has a little barrel swivel, and this is the pretty simple way. You just tie a normal knot to the top of the barrel swivel, and then your fluorocarbon down on the bottom. And six to eight inch leader, this is good for, I don't know, seven, eight knots that you wanna tie up to your jigs and mm -hmm. then you just tie another piece of fluorocarbon on. The other way you can do this is how I had it on my other rod. There's a few different knots you can use. I have an Alberto knot on here, but you can see this connection here is quite smooth. Cut the, I should cut the tag ends a little bit more, but it's ice fishing, it's not like you're casting, it doesn't need to be like super, tight to it but that's just another way you can do it this is a little bit more work but ends up being a little bit smoother um, but both ways work great it doesn't really matter just a matter of how you want to set it up all right guys so here is what we mainly use for jigging and so what we have here is our standard five millimeter jig that one is terrible all the paint is chipped off this is a better one five millimeter, pretty standard. You can get lots of bluegill on that. Here's a little bit smaller one, three millimeter. Which I like three millimeters a little bit better, a little bit lower of a profile, more fish, more fun. Uh, next, we're gonna move on to this little Rapala Rip and Wrap. This is in a natural perch color and it is glowing. I've caught more bass on this lure than any other lure on top of this box right now. I don't know what it is around the southeastern Wisconsin area, but the bass love this lure. It's a smaller profile, it's not intimidating, it's got a nice rattle inside, make a lot of noise, attract fish, and uh, small enough to where they think they can get an easy meal. Next here is a pretty good standard. This is just a Swedish pimple. I've got it in like a purple fluorescent color there. Um, pretty standard jigging spoon little bit uh bigger obviously than the rip and wrap but obviously a great bass catching machine you can also get some pike on this too i've seen guys get walleye in this um also some bigger crappies on this too and uh yeah jigging spoon flutters up sinks back down really nice and that's really all there is to it not much to that next here is a acme hyper glide this is a smaller one but the unique thing about this bait, it kind of looks like a traditional jig and wrap here from Rapala. That is a standard, it's been around forever. And a lot of guys usually use this on open water for walleyes. Mm -hmm. And uh, same kind of concept as far as the hook placement, except you have these little flaps, these little wings right here. And those, when you jig it, uh, go down, but when it falls, those go up and they make a little clicking as it goes down. So when you're jigging in place, those wings just kind of flap up and down. And when you do slower, small jigs, it just kind of flaps right in place. And then you can jig it a little bit bigger and it kind of swims and darts around while those wings are still moving. This is a great crappie bait, as you can see in the smaller size, also a great bass bait as well. Um, here is a great bass bait. It is the same thing, perch colored, I've done really well with this. Um, yeah, just a little bit bigger size, same thing with the Hyper Glide. You can see here, there's actually a little plastic clip right by the hook. And uh, this is not a broken piece on your bait, so don't worry. When you are in deep water and wanna get to fish quickly, it doesn't even have to be deep water, you just wanna get to fish quickly. Your line is obviously tied up here to this main loop. But if you want to get down there fast, this bait sinks slow because of these wings. And so what you do is you put the line inside of the little clip there. 
and drop it straight down and then those wings don't get in the way the bait just drops straight down and once you get down to the depth you want you just give it a little pop and the line just comes right out of that clip so yeah. that is super unique and cool for getting you down really quick here's another little bait this is a little vibrato um this is a pretty standard bait hasn't really been used in the ice fishing game that long me and nathan are gonna go lake trout fishing at least twice this weekend yep and uh we will be using a bigger size of this and this is really all the vibrato has been known for is great lakes fishing especially here around the milwaukee area and catching big salmon and lakers and brown trout i mean it is a great great lakes jigging bait and uh they've started making smaller sizes a lot of different unique colors and started getting to the ice fishing game i have not really used this all that much but i imagine it would also be really good for bass through the ice so that is basically our jigging setups for bass and bluegills. Mm -hmm. That's really the main lures we use. We obviously have a lot more, um, but that's that's really it. I mean, for panfish, like we said earlier, it's mainly just the little tungsten jigs with wax worms on it. And then when we get into more bass fishing, we go into more of the rip style baits like that rip and wrap here. There's one more look at that one. You can tip that with a wax worm on the back too. Doesn't really matter. Um, Nathan, you got any favorite baits you want to show? Yeah. Like Spencer mentioned, these are the Rapala Rip and Wraps. I have two colors. So those are two Rip and Wraps made by Rapala. And two different colors. This is more natural. This is more like, you know, get it in their face, aggressive fish, flashy. And then I got my jig box right here. You can tell those other baits are a little bit bigger in size, so that is yep. good for getting a little bit more quality fish, but I might get a few more on that really tiny one. Yep. Um, but still great fish catching yep. lures. That's the only difference, the size is the yeah. only difference. And these are my jigs, got some golds for good crappie fishing, and then just smaller ones for gills and stuff, and then bigger ones for like minnow heads and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. The gold you can obviously see in this top right corner is a favorite of Nathan's. Yeah. We go uh, to a few different lakes that have some quality crappies in them, and uh, we've noticed over the years that gold is definitely the color to get them on, and that is just kind of a standard thing is gold and crappies. I don't know why, but mm -hmm. I've always been told that my whole life. It doesn't not apply to ice fishing. They love it just as much. Um, you can use a little fathead or a lot of our crappies actually just come on a wax worm like we're fishing for bluegills, except those marks are higher off. Yep. And uh, we'll show you what that looks like with our electronics here in a little bit. And then one last bait is the frostbite dinner bell right here. This isn't my favorite color because my favorite color sold out, unfortunately. But this is the smaller of the dinner bells and I think this is three sixteenths and the bigger one is three eighths ounce. But I like this for bass, you know, crappies will eat this and good walleye bait too. So you can see how it is compared to his hand here. I mean, still generally speaking, smaller baits. I mean, none of these baits are huge. You're going for bass. They're not in middle of fall trying to gorge up. Uh, a lot of times the mistake I see is guys using too big of lures and this is really as big as I would get for going for bass. Um, this is just with Nathan and I's experience, but generally they get turned off with baits that are a lot bigger than this or even just slightly bigger than this. Um, that is a pretty standard size that they like to eat. This is obviously a smaller profile, but he has caught crappies. He's caught bass on that. Still a great lure kind of like the Swedish pimple, yep. but a little bit different design. You can see the little bit different curvature there on that spoon, along with a little different colored piece on the inside. Adds a little bit of rattle, a little bit of a different color scheme to it. Overall, great bait mm -hmm. from Frostbite. And the color I recommend is the rose gold or just the normal gold. Um, really like that because it just glitters more in the water and you know flutters down 